Chapter 21 The Army on the Mountains Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink, and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them, and when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. 2 Kings 6, 8-23 This is a magnificent account, and one which should be a very present reality to us. To force Israel into Syria's grand alliance against Assyria, the Syrian monarch decided to send a detachment of men, comparable to modern commandos, into the territories of Israel. Through spies in the Israelite palace, he knew when and where the king would travel, and he made plans to attack and kill him on the way. By this means, Israel would be rendered leaderless and therefore amenable to pressure to join Syria's alliance as a satellite state. Elisha empowered by God, was made aware of all the various ambushes set by Syria and each time notified the king of Israel. As a result, the Syrian king was sure that a traitor in his own household or troops was notifying Samaria of all his plans. In fact, however, some loose-tongued people in the Samarian palace had talked of the matter so that the word had spread in exaggerated fashion to the spies and to Damascus. Elisha was given credit for the power to hear the very words spoken in his bedroom by the Syrian king, an uncomfortable thought. Orders were thus given to the commandos to seize Elisha at Dothan, and during the night they surrounded the city. Terrified, Elisha's servant told Elisha of this fact. Elisha prayed that his servant's eyes be opened to see God's hosts around them, horses and chariots, to wit, fire the emblem of God's presence in power and judgment. The Syrian commandos were supernaturally left dazed and stupefied. Elisha offered as a stranger to lead them to Elisha and the right city. In fact, he led them into the center of Samaria. The Israelite king was in favor of executing all Assyrians at once. 
He would not kill prisoners in wartime. How could he do so now? They were, moreover, Alicia's prisoners. Alicia ordered that they be fed and released. No further such sorties were made by Assyria. An important fact is Alicia's lie to the Syrian commandos. Like Rahab in Jericho and the Hebrew midwives in Egypt, he saw no immorality in telling the truth to men determined to do evil and murder. The perfectionists who looked down on Rahab and the midwives must logically condemn Elisha as well. God does not. Truth must serve God in his justice, not evil. Another very important fact is the presence of the heavenly hosts. It was not their presence which is remarkable, but the fact that Elisha's servants saw them. This was not the first time such a sight was possible for men. According to Genesis 32, 1-2, when Jacob was sent to meet his brother Esau, who was determined to kill him, God's angels protected him. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host, and he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Mahanaim means two camps. Jacob was referring to the fact that two groups were present there, his group and the heavenly host, so that he moved towards Esau with a double host. Several texts speak of this fact as an unseen defence as basic to our lives. The angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them. Psalm 34, 7 He shall defend thee under his wings, thou shalt be safe under his feathers, his righteousness and truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Psalm 91, 4 He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Psalm 91, 11 And I will encamp about mine house because of the army, because of him that passeth by, and because of him that returneth, and no oppressor shall pass through them any more, for now I have seen with mine eyes. Zechariah 9, 8 The angel of his presence saved them, and he bare them, and carried them all the days of old. Isaiah 63, 9 What happened to Elisha was not altogether unique. The fact that the heavenly army was seen is unique. God's angels guard us, although we do not see it. The protection is always there, but not on our terms. We must remember that the greatest evil is neither suffering nor death, but a failure to believe and grow in faith. The world we live in, and also the invisible world which surrounds us, are both very real, and we dare not downgrade the reality of either. We must remember, however, that the determinative order is God and his counsel. Every life is held in God's hands, and all things are ordained by his wisdom and will. Every word spoken, every step taken, and every work done by us is in virtue of a power not our own. He who gives us both the new life and the power has made us his sons and daughters by the adoption of grace, and the Lord protects his own family and possession. Earlier, fiery chariots and horses had parted Elijah and Elisha, 2 Kings 2, 11 and 12, and now a like power surrounds Elisha to protect him. The term, chariots of fire, has rightly passed into the language as a term for supernatural power. Syria had sent horses and chariots to destroy Elisha. God had his own forces, in comparable format, but with supernatural power poised to defend Elisha. Israel was a condemned nation, but God, in remarkable ways, continued to defend Israel and to witness to the peoples. As we face like people, profligate and unrepentant in their ways, we must not fear. Elisha's word stands, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Verse 16 Lord, open the eyes of thy people that they may see.